What I'd like to talk to you about today is my new book, which is called The Interleukin Revolution. And it's a memoir. And it's about the first 20 years of my career in science. And in this book, I describe several instances of when I had eureka moments, when it was just simply a mind rush of euphoria when a discovery is made. And you know, a lot of scientists will go their whole careers without a eureka moment. And this will give you a little bit of a flavor of the book. And the first one I want to talk about is when we generated for the first time ever in the history of science, long-term cytotoxic T lymphocyte lines. And this was done in the mouse. And we were interested in trying to generate cytotoxic T cells that would kill leukemia cells. And so we were immunizing mice with irradiated leukemia cells so they wouldn't grow in the mice. And we were hoping that the mice would develop uh, an immunity. We did a lot of different experiments and we were successful and we could do that. We could generate cytotoxic T cells that would kill leukemia cells. Distinct advantage of that is that you might be able to use those cells, those cytotoxic T cells to, to treat leukemia. But the problem was we could only grow them for a few days. So we couldn't get enough of them to really do much of anything. Another laboratory and a person by the name of Doris Morgan, together with a postdoc, she was a postdoc, and together with a postdoc by the name of Frank Rossetti working in Bob Gallo's laboratory at the NCI had found that if they stimulated lymphocytes to uh, proliferate for a short time and then took the culture media from these stimulated lymphocytes. They could get T cells to grow longer than just a few days. So we thought, well, that's great. Well, we'll just put our cytotoxic T cells in this stuff and see if they'll grow. I, I was hoping that they would grow, but I I thought, you know, this is, this is a long shot. But to make a long story very short, it, it worked the very first time and it worked all the times thereafter. We published data in Nature in 1977 on Bastille Day, July 14th. I thought that was sort of uh, prophetic because I, I visioned that this was going to be a, a revolution in T-cell immunology and in immunology in general. 